All right, guys, let's talk about osteoid osteomas with your favorite bone pathologist, Vikram Deshpande. This in the background, ladies and gentlemen, is the most awesome example of an osteoid osteoma you will ever come across. Isn't that pretty? So you've seen this before. We're talking about bone forming tumors here. We've talked about osteoblastomas. Now, if you wait to the end of my talk, so hold on, hold your horses, you'll find out that osteoid osteomas and osteoblastomas have more in common than you think. All right, so let's get the demographic data out of the way. This is slightly more common in men than in women, typically in the first and the second decade of life. These patients present with a very characteristic clinical picture. They come with pain, occasionally very severe pain, typically at night, and that is relieved by NSAIDs. Now, if you haven't heard that symptom complex, all I can say is, where have you been all these years? That is classic, classic of an osteoid osteoma. There's some bones that are more commonly involved than others, long bones, particularly the femur and the tibia, the bones of the hands and feet as well, in the spine, particularly the posterior arch, and within individual bones, it more frequently affects the cortex, although you can have lesions, osteoid osteomas, growing out of the cancellous or medullary region of the bone. This is a plain film, and osteoid osteomas have a very characteristic appearance. What you see is the nidus, this lucent zone, surrounded by a very sclerotic periphery. The other thing I'll point out to you is that this lesion is predominantly intracortical. So this is a CT scan and you get a better look at the nidus. Here's the nidus, right? That circle went a little off. Here's the sclerotic bone surrounding the nidus. This is where the original cortical bone ended. And so believe it or not, all of this stuff beyond here is all peritumoral reaction. And if those radiologic images don't appeal to you, here's a gross image. We almost never see these because the treatment of choice for osteoid osteomas is thermal ablation, very rarely resection. And even when they're resected, it generally tends to be a, a curatage, not an on block resection. So back to the specimen. So here's the nidus, right? And then you can see this very sclerotic bone all around the nidus. So this sclerosis around the nidus is very typical of an osteoid. And here's a very low power appearance, again, showing off that very characteristic nidus and that massive sclerotic reaction around the nidus. This is what a classic osteoid osteoma looks like. You have seams of bone, the typically not lace-like, remember lace-like means, suggests an osteosarcoma. And then within between these bony trabeculae, what you see is this very loose, but very vascularized stroma. So you'll see a lot of vessels and the bone is lined by osteoblasts. And if you look at these osteoblasts really carefully, and even though this is an extremely high power, there is no atypia whatsoever in the, uh, among these osteoblasts. This, if there were one image to burn into your, into your brain with regards to an osteoid osteoma, this would be the image to burn. But like every other tumor, there are variations on this theme. And occasionally you'll bump into an osteoid osteoma with a lot more osteoid. So there's very little of that vascularized stroma. There is a little bit of it, but the bulk of the tumor is composed of bone. Some of it is mineralized like here. Some of it is unmineralized like here. So here's an example of a very heavily mineralized osteoid osteoma. But again, if you take a very close look, you will see some vascularized stroma and you will see occasional osteoplasts as well as osteoclasts.
Now, I've been doing all the talking. It's time you do some of the talking. It's time to put your knowledge to work. All right, so here's a lesion to admire. It's rather fragmented, isn't it? And there's a lot of bone. There's bone here, there's bone there, there's bone there, there's bone there. We're going to have to take a closer look at this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, question for you. Is this osteoid osteoma? Is this lesional bone? There's certainly bone here, right? There's bone here. In fact, that looks like lamella bone, so it's very unlikely to be lesional. But some of this looks like bovine bone. That could be lesional. Is this enough to call it an osteoid osteoma? And here's more stuff. Now, this is clearly lamella bone, but there's junk and crud and all kinds of other things stuck in here. Is this lesional tissue? Let's cut to the chase. This is not lesional tissue. This is just reactive stuff around the nidus. And very frequently, both in biopsies and keratotype specimens, the bulk of what you will see is this stuff, this reactive bone that is around the nidus. Right, so all of this is reactive bone. This, of course, is pre-existing lamella bone that's there for the ride. And notice that the stroma is very fibrotic. The stroma of an osteoid osteoma looks very vascularized and not fibrotic. So another look at this image and you'll notice there's a lot of crud and junk. All of this is bone dust. And as the radiologist drills to the lesion, they produce all this bone dust. So do not mistake bone dust and perilesional tissue for osteoid osteoma, a common trap, a common pitfall. So this is not lesional tissue. Instead, this is lesional tissue. And I'll show you this on a slightly higher power on the next image. So here's a higher power image of the nidus. Notice the non-mineralized bone and the vascularized stroma. This is classic for an osteoid osteoma. So just for fun, here's another osteoid osteoma. It's arising from the cortex, and this particular example is from the tibia. So there's a lot going on in this biopsy, but the one thing I can tell you is that most of this biopsy is lesional tissue. There's very little perilesional tissue, which is down here. Some of this is bone dust. You're probably now familiar with this picture. This looks a little like a fibroaceous lesion, right? So you might think fibrous dysplasia, but no, take another look. This is not fibrous dysplasia. This is not osteofibrous dysplasia because the bony trabeculae are extensively lined by osteoblasts. In fact, between the trabeculae, there are almost collections of osteoblasts. If you look very carefully, you might find an osteoclast as well. There you go again, that bone surrounded by a very prominent population of osteoblasts and that loose vascularized trauma. This is typical for an osteoid osteoma. All right, time to talk about differential diagnosis. Number one on the differential diagnosis for an osteoid osteoma is an osteoblastoma. Fortunately, it is very easy to make the distinction between an osteoid osteoma and an osteoblastoma because fundamentally there is no difference between the two tumors. They are genetically the same. So what did we do? We invented a rule and the rule is the two centimeter rule. Anything less than two centimeters is an osteoid osteoma. Anything more than two centimeters is an osteoblastoma. And that rule actually turns out to work quite nicely because osteoid osteomas are associated with that nidus and pain, things that you do not see in an osteoblastoma. So perhaps the easiest rule in the world to follow, the two centimeter rule. Next on the differential diagnosis and osteosarcoma, but this is only a theoretical differential diagnosis. I can bet my bottom dollar that you will not mistake an osteoid osteoma for an osteosarcoma. And here's the reason. And the reason why you're not going to mistake an osteoid osteoma for an osteosarcoma is that osteoid osteomas are very well circumscribed. Osteosarcomas, by and large, 
are infiltrative. The lining cells of an osteoastioma tend to look very bland, while that of an osteosarcoma look much more atypical in most cases. All right, if it's not osteosarcoma, how about osteoma? Would you consider a diagnosis of osteoma in the differential diagnosis of an osteoastioma? The answer is probably no, but this time it is based on location. Remember, osteomas are lesions on the surface of the bone. Remember that stuck on appearance? Osteoid osteomas are for the most part intracortical, which is why you have to establish a relationship with, the, with your radiologist. Your radiologist tends to be your best friend in these circumstances. And to add to that, Osteomas look like mature cortical bone. This is not what osteoid osteomas look like. So location and histology both essentially rule out an osteoid osteoma. How about those other lesions that also produce bone, fibrous dysplasia and osteofibrous dysplasia? And again, I very much doubt you'll confuse an osteoid osteoma for fibrous dysplasia, osteofibrous dysplasia. And the primary reason is look at that stroma. It is composed of spindle shaped cells. Think of the stroma of an osteoid osteoma, very vascularized and loose stroma. You do not see sheets of bland looking spindle shaped cells. And this is apart from the radiologic appearance, which would be quite, quite different. Well, that's it for osteoid osteoma. If you have questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Do subscribe to this YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for watching and bye-bye.